All right, here we are considering the function, the cube root of x. And the first part is that we are going to find f prime of a. It will be using the definition of the derivative to do so. And this is the one that we are going to use. Let me write it down right here for you guys. f prime of a is equal to the limit as x approaching a. And then we are going to put down our original function minus the function at a, and then divide it by x minus a. So it's pretty much just low formula, and it's also right here. All right, let's just go ahead and plug in and just work this out. So here, we are looking at the limit as x approaching a. Well, f of x is just the original, so it's just the cube root of x. And then minus f of a, we just had to put a into the x. So we have the cube root of a. And then lastly, here we have the x minus a. All right, so we have to take care of this. But of course, if we just put a into the x here and here, we'll end up with 0 over 0 all the time. Whenever you are doing the definition of the derivative, it's always 0 over 0 situation. So we must do some algebra work to simplify this. And the way that we are going to take care of this is that we'll use the difference of two cubes to help us factor or the cube root conjugate, that kind of thing. Let me write it down for you guys. So when we have uh, let's put it down like this way, okay? a to the third power minus b to the third power. This is the difference of two cubes. This right here can be factored as a minus b times a squared, and here will be a plus, and then we have the a b here, and then plus b squared. The reason we are using this is because we see that we have this thing minus that, so the a is the cube root of x, and then the capital B is the cube root of little a. If we multiply by this part together, we can just cube this and then minus the cube of that. So this is how we can get rid of the cube root. So this is kind of like the conjugate for this, for the cube root situation. So therefore, we are going to multiply by, okay, a squared, which is this thing squared. Let me just put it down like this the cube root of x, and then we square that. And then we add a, b, meaning this times that. And let's just put them inside, right? Because cube root times cube root, we can just have the cube root of a times x, or x times 8, right? But let's write it as a times x. And then lastly, we have the plus this term, and we square that. So let's write it as the cube root of a, and then square. And let's also do the same on the bottom. So again, this is very similar to the conjugate, but here we have the cube root. That's why the conjugate is like much longer right here. But anyway, now let's just go ahead and write this down nicely. Cube root of x squared plus the cube root of a times x plus the cube root of a and then square. And if you would like, you could also have put down a square inside. Doesn't really matter that much. All right, so now, when we continue, we will have the limit as x approaching a. And then for the top, the good news is that when we take this multiplied by that, we'll just use this formula, which is just going to give us a to the third power minus b to the third power. This thing to the third power is just what? x. And then minus this thing to the third power is just a. Yeah. And then guess what? On the bottom, do not multiply it out because we have this x minus a is ready for us to cancel with that, right? So let me just write this down so we can keep everything like nice and clear. So uh, perhaps let's put the square inside because we don't have any like actual numbers. So square inside is actually better, but it doesn't really matter. So put a square inside, same thing. Why didn't I do that earlier? It seriously uh, doesn't really matter that much. It only matters when you have to do computation by hand, but we are not. We, we don't need to do that. So, yeah. All right. So cancel, cancel. Yes. Now put the a into the x here, x here, and <laughs> that's all, right? So we are looking at we have one over. This is the cube root of a square, and then we add three times this a in black times x is a, so we will have another a, and lastly we have the cube root of a squared. But guess what? This is a squared, this is also a squared, this is also a squared, and they are only the cube root. So altogether we have three of them. So together we can write this down as 1 over 3, this is the coefficient, all right? 
and then this is the cube root, and then the inside is a square. Therefore, we have found the derivative for this function as some number a. So that's that. That's part a. And then for part b, we are going to hmm, try to see what's f of 0. Well, notice if we do f of 0, there's a, going to be a small trouble. So part b, that's fine. Well, actually, that's, let's just take a look at f prime of 0. But for f prime of 0, do we have to go through all this? No, because we have the formula already. So have a look. f prime of 0 is just going to be 1 over, we're plugging string there. Well, we have the 3, we're plugging the 0 into the a. Right, so we have 0 square. But guess what? This right here doesn't work, right? We can have 0 on the bottom. So this right here, it's undefined, meaning that it, you don't have the derivative there, unfortunately. And part C, we are going to just show that when we have the cube root of x, we have a vertical tangent line. So, yeah, the question is asking for us for vertical tangent line. So let me just write this down. Vertical tangent line, tangent line at the point 0, 0. And the best way to do this is just go ahead and draw a picture. If we graph the cube root of x, the picture will look like this. And then go straight up and then like this. So as you can see at 0, 0, it does have a vertical tangent line. So let me just tell you, guess that this is the vertical tangent line. And what's the slope of any vertical line? Undefined. Therefore, we do not have the derivative over there at x equal to 0. So that's it for this question.